whole you different can thing. the speaker itself, not the. I mean. Oh, it doesn't have a. I think it's all the way over. Okay. Maybe behind you. Yeah, I'm not. I wasn't well, sure. Well, see if we can switch that out. Okay. That's because usually that's because I get a little loopy and then. <laughs> no, some of them are funny, like yeah. Hot Mess Express. <laughs> it's like mm. nothing like that. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Alright, everyone take a minute to send some peaceful energy Heather's direction. Her mom and Larry just got there and she said it's not going well. Oh, no. How are the little ones doing? She said they're um she said Reagan's doing okay. Lauren is she said poor Lauren is trying so hard to push all the bad feelings out. Oh. I'm so, sorry. so I'm assuming Lauren is just trying to be happy and make everyone happy. That's how I'm interpreting that. Lauren is the baby, right? Yeah. yeah. So she's the littlest one, so I imagine trying to process all that is hard. How old is she? Well, I mean, she's not a baby anymore. She's nine. Or nine. Yeah, but she is the baby. She when I say baby, baby I mean right, she's, she's the baby of the family. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't think I'm going to be able to okay. do this. I'd have to move this whole big thing. Alright, no problem. She did send a picture of Reagan, which is just like, what the heck? That's Reagan right now? Yeah. Today? today. Or, yeah, today. They're so straight, too. Yeah, well, and I mean, the, the last picture Heather had of Ellie, like... Ellie just got her hair sprayed. Yeah. Is Ellie, was Ellie the middle or the oldest? The oldest. Okay, I'm going to start the show, I think. So, does anybody need anything before I do that? I have one question. Yeah. Um, when, on, so this was a half off day off. That's right. Yep. So, when it says $10 strand, strand stream special, that means they were all $10 flat, no discount. Correct? done that move. Okay. So all of these hydro support strands are five dollars yeah. after this test. Correct. Okay. Uh you probably have to put yeah the strap one up in there. That's cool. Okay.
Hey everybody, how are y'all doing? Happy Saturday evening live tutorial stream. Apparently my mic decided it was going to randomly turn itself on a few minutes ago, so um, you got a little audio behind the scenes at the Beating Dreams, but thank y'all so much for being with us on this Saturday evening tutorial stream, which will be um, followed by a live merchandise sale and yay for um, Ivy being um, on with us thank you so much and yeah it's been oh goodness it's just been a, it's been a, it's been a yeah um, so yes Diane is and Diane has a new hair color also which you can see behind me um, so she's oh. got yeah you're you're totally in the camera view I forgot about that <laughs> yeah there's no wall there's no fourth wall okay. for tonight's stream. Sorry for the show. But yeah, um, Diane is helping out tonight taking notes. Heather is with her family in Houston. Um, and everyone take a moment if you have the energy and just send some peaceful thoughts to Heather and her family in Houston because more family apparently just arrived and things aren't aren't going so great. So tonight, what are we going to do on stream? We're going to do this. This is going to be our wire wrapped faceted gemstone pendant. So, and we've actually had two, this is going to be our second tutorial of the week where we um, deal with how to, hi Corvus, how to um, utilize a stone um, that doesn't have a hole in it. So the first one, of course, was our um, mini captured cabochon, captured gemstone, pendant, and then this is the second one. So let's talk tools and supplies for this evening's tutorial. Excuse me. Ah. Ruler is actually important for tonight. So um, what you're going to need is you are going to need some 20 gauge square wire you're gonna need some 20 gauge half round wire um, as far as how much of each if you're doing like a moderately sized stone like I am doing tonight you're gonna need about um, 18 inches of the square and about 18 inches of the half round will there be a test at the end well, the test is called uh, the sale. We, we shall test how much money you're willing to spend on beads. Um, so about 18 inches of each for, like I said, a moderately sized stone. This one's a, a about an inch long. Um, if you're doing a bigger stone, you're going to need more wire. If you're doing a smaller stone, you're not going to need quite as much wire. Um, and then you are, and, and as far as supplies go, that's really it. So a stone. 20 gauge square, 20 gauge half round. As far as tools go, painter's tape, ruler, marker, um, and your basic wire wrapping hand tools, those being your round nose pliers, your chain nose pliers, and your wire cutters. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to measure our stone using our painter's tape. So, I'm going to take my painter's tape and I'm going to just, and you can use masking tape as well. I'm just going to pull off a piece of my tape and I'm going to use that to wrap around my stone. So, this is going to give me the outside circumference of my stone. And I want to make sure, ideally, that I get it lined up and tight to my stone like so. Okay, so that's going to measure the outside circumference of my stone. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my marker and I'm going to mark on either side of my tape where that meeting point is. And then I can remove my tape from my stone. I'm going to try not to fling it at anybody and then I'm going to put that onto my ruler so that I can see exactly what 
that outside. Really? Oh, there are tropical storm warnings, Diane. Here? Um, parts of Texas and the Mexico coast. No! <laughs> Diane is an insurance adjuster, so hurricanes mean lots of extra work for her. Okay, so basically what we have is we're going to call this two and three quarter inches. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that total length by six. Okay, and so this is my handout for this. So basically this is what we're doing. Alright, so basically there are going to be uh, it, no, not a hurricane, Amy. There are tropical storm warnings. Okay, so when we're doing this, we've got four prongs. One, two, three, four. Um, so if we're going to divide this, we can divide this into six because we also have our bale here. So one sixth of the cir circumference on one side of the bale, one sixth on the other. There's our bale. And then um, the bottom is going to be a third. So trust me, it actually does make sense, even though I don't necessarily, um, I'm not necessarily doing a good job, of, a good job of explaining it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this length, which again is two and three quarter inches, and I'm going to divide it by six, by six, and that's going to be. Oh my goodness, what the... Like my mother doesn't know what I'm doing at 6.45 p.m. She's sending me texts about shelving! Hi, Mom! Boy, yay! Seriously, yes, there is math on this test, Corvus. Luckily, I'm betting you come equi equipped with a calculatory device just like... Uh, I do, and most of us do these days. So, two and three quarters, 2.75 divided by six is 0.458, okay? So basically, slightly less than half an inch. So we're just gonna go ahead and call that 0.5, and we're gonna have to fudge it somewhere along the way. So, now I'm going to grab my 20 gauge bronze wire, and I'm going to cut myself three pieces, each of which is, um, I can send you a photo of it, Lori. Um, so yeah, I'm going to cut myself three pieces, each of which is six inches long. This is of my 20 gauge square wire. Um, more is better than less, so if you're going to err, err on the side of cutting too much. Okay, so I'm going to take my, well, hi, good vibes. How is everything where you're at? Is it the middle of the night? I feel like it's probably the middle of the night. Hi, it's me. Okay, so I'm going to find the center of my wire for starters. So... All right, so I've measured and marked the center of one of my pieces, 12.44 a.m. That is, in fact, the middle of the night. Are you working on Legos, or are you just hanging out watching, uh, got it. Are, are you doing Legos, or are you just hanging out watching stuff on Twitch? Okay, so I've got my, actually, Lori, I have a whole handout on this that I couldn't send you. Because um, this is actually a class that we used to teach in person pre-pandemic. 
Um, so, mark the center of one of your pieces of, ooh, Star Wars battlesh Battleship Lego, that's awesome. Um, one of my friends who you see on the sale sometimes, um, what the Frank, Frank Mena, he um, just got for his birthday medieval castle, castle Legos, and he had a great time putting those together. So, okay, so I've marked the center of my wire, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark on either side of center that distance that I, that was my divided by six, so um, for me that's going to be 0.5 um, inches away from center. So I'm just going to line that up on my ruler, and I'm going to mark. Um, and, and what I, the way that I wrote my handout, what I did is I called that distance A. So I'm going to mark, um, A distance away from each side of center, like so. Okay, so now I've got three marks. One is center, one is A distance to the left, and one is A distance to the right. Now I'm going to go ahead and create my two prongs, one at each of those points. So, alright, so I'm going to go ahead and grab at one of those. Yeah, that's fair. Um, good vibes. Have you watched any of the Star Wars uh, TV shows that are streaming on Disney Plus? As a Star Wars fan from way back, I've been quite enjoying them. So to make our prongs, we're going to bend up at 90 degrees. Then we're going to go up. And how far up you're going to go is going to be dependent on the depth of your stone, but one eighth of an inch is like good vibes likes your hair, Diane. I'm sorry? Um, like good vibes, who's a viewer from uh, Ireland, likes your hair. Oh, thank you. She says it looks like candy floss, which we call it cotton candy here in the U.S., but I like candy floss so much better. Such a, like it. Such a better term. Okay, so for most stones, an eighth of an inch is good. Okay, so I'm going to go up an eighth of an inch, and then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take my wire. I should have raised up my camera because I'm having trouble getting my pliers under my camera tonight. But I'm going to bend that all the way down like so. Okay, so I make a complete U-bend, and then I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to squeeze it. And then I'm just going to hold that and bend my wire back flat. So what I have is I've got this little, this little prong kind of in the middle of my horizon line. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side at this mark. No, the, uh, the ones that you're talking about, Good Vibes, are the ones that I'm talking about. The, the, newer, the newer shows. Um, though, you know, as usual, if you want a good laugh and you want to see Drunk Harrison Ford, just watch the Star Wars Holiday Special. It is, it's definitely uh, in the canon as literally the worst Star Wars thing ever produced. Happy life day, y'all. Um, but yeah, love the Mandalorian. Enjoy the book of Boba Fett. The Obi-Wan Kenobi series also um, was way better than expected. Like, way better. But I think the Mandalorian for me kind of kind of takes the takes the cake. 
as being like the the best one of the new ones okay so again I've, I've bent that now what I need to do is squeeze this and then bend it back out. Okay, so these are my bottom two prongs. I do exactly the same thing on my second piece of my 20 gauge square wire. So again, mark the center and then mark that A distance, which for this project is gonna be half an inch on either side of center. Alright, so there we go, and now I'm going to make Galaxy of Sounds. I'm not familiar with that movie. Alright, and then I'm going to go ahead and make my prongs. So once again, that's a bend up, an eighth of an inch up, and I'm just eyeballing that at this point. Bend it over, press it down to fold your prong, and then bend it back out. Like so, and then we're going to repeat on this side. It's a series on Disney Plus. I will have to check that out because that's somehow escaped my radar. Like, I don't know if it flew under my radar, radar or over my head, but either way, I will have to check that out. Um, let's see, uh, continuing on with, all right, let's hold that, bend that back out. Um, let's see, other good things, I, uh, finished, uh, The Sandman on Netflix, and yes, you should absolutely watch it, because it's amazing. And I've never read the comics, but... It's still amazing. It's beautiful and engaging and amazing at, like, you don't have to have read the comics to enjoy the series. Um, good, very good question from Lori. Okay, do you cut more wire than the circumference of the stone? And the answer is yes. So the circumference of my stone was two and three quarter inches and so six inches is um, actually more than double that that's probably a little bit more than I need but yes you you're gonna want probably at least double the circumference of your stone um, <laughs> how blue raspberry see I always thought blue raspberry just tasted like whatever it needed to make your tongue blue Okay, so then what I'm going to, I am literally referring to my own handout here because it's been so long since I taught this class. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make two more marks that are once again that A distance, that distance that is one-sixth of the circumference of our piece. For me, that's 0.5 inches. So I'm going to make another mark 0.5 inches away from this prong and from this prong. I'm going to do that on both pieces of wire. Um, but yeah, I always thought blue raspberry was, was a gimmick specifically because it would turn your tongue blue and kids like stuff like that. Because um, it really was, it, I feel like it kind of became a thing during my childhood. I don't know if it was around before then. I was a child of the, you know, late 80s, early 90s when all of the crazy chemical stuff was like, hey, let's do this to children. All 
Alright. So now I've got my marks for my next set of prongs. There. And there. So now I'm going to go ahead and make those. is. Okay, so there's my next prong. Oh my god. Good omens. Love. So much love. I've never met Neil Gaiman though. That's that's amazing. Um, but yes, love good omens. Okay, so now I've got four prongs. One, two, three, four. I'm going to repeat on my other one. And I think there's going to... Even though good omens was like a self-contained thing, I, I feel like I read somewhere that there was going to be a second season of it. Which I am all about, as it was fantastic. Actors are—I mean, I'm a huge David David Tennant fan. Um, ever since he was, you know, Doctor Number Ten, but and then the, my last one's gonna go at this mark. Um, but yeah, Good Omens was amazing. I don't have a Twitch notification. I'm it's wondering how late Heather wrote some of these notes in the stream. Um, well, <laughs> we, yeah. I guess we'll have some fun things in here. Okay. Sometimes it also depends on how Saturday has gone. Because <laughs> sometimes we get loopy earlier than other times. Ooh, Amy has a story to tell. An app? Yes. Is, the, is this a story to tell on stream or a story that I have to call and talk to you about later? Oh, wow. That's awesome, Sharon. I had no idea you did that. All right, so now I've got two sets of wire, or sorry, two wires with prongs and one wire without. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line all of these up and I can either, what the heck is, oh, got it. Now that's somebody else's stream, which, go, go away. I like you, you're fine, but I don't want to watch your stream because I'm doing my own. My phone does not know what the heck is going. Um. Ah! That's amazing, Sharon. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Oh my gosh! Okay. Is everybody okay? Is everybody okay? And you already got paid for the house, right? Please tell me you did before it burned down. That's nuts. Okay, so now this is my 20 gauge half round. <laughs> eating your sock. Well, I mean, my cat eats cicadas and snakes, so I feel like sock is maybe par for the course? I don't even know. Oh dear, there's a bigger story. Okay, so while Amy is filling us in on the bigger story of the house that she sold in Garland, I'm going to take my... <clears throat> my uh, 20 gauge half round and I'm going to bend it to make a little J. Oh god, I, I didn't look. I need to look. Yeah, so um, for anyone who wasn't on the Zoom last night, um, to answer Lori's question, 
I found some random feathers in my house. Oh yeah, what happened with the feathers? I I look didn't No, I didn't look under the bed. Oh no. Yeah, so so yeah, so so Mamie, my adorable little um tiny small murder cat uh likes to bring in things that she's killed and put them under the bed. And usually um, Ziggy, my other uh, big stupid murder cat, um, <gasps> what? Oh my god! So they were working on the plumbing on Amy's house that yeah. she sold, and are you watching it or no? I don't have enough. No, they found a a dead body. <gasps> oh my god! Un uh, under the floor. Oh my god! Like, yeah, uh, human? From, I'm assuming yes. <laughs> Likely been there for roughly forty years. Oh my, oh god. my god! Um. So yeah. So for anybody who was on the Zoom last night, I found some random feathers in random places in my house, and maybe my darling murder cat. In the foundation, oh my lord. That's crazy. That's nuts. That is absolutely nuts. That, oh god. Um, so did you all have any, like, issues with paranormal activity in the house? Or anything like that? Is me coming up this week? Um, I haven't asked her yet. Oh. Um, I mean, we talked on the phone last night. Oh, alright. Uh, and Good Vibes says, can you tell Candy Floss Hair Lady that she is pretty? Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, wow. But yeah, so, so as far as my, my own murder, um, murders in my house, uh, I've been finding random feathers. I have found several random feathers. And I have fears that Mamie may have murdered a bird and hidden it under my bed. And like I said, usually Ziggy, my my dumb murder cat, will show me when Mamie's murdered something and hid it somewhere. He'll he'll just go right to it. But he hasn't. And so we were we were talking about it on stream last night and everyone was pretty much of the opinion that I needed to go check under the bed before things started to, you know, smell and breed maggots. But I didn't last night, so that'll be on my list of things to do tomorrow. Yay. Wow. That's insane. Oh, yeah. I, but, okay, the only thing that, the only thing that, like, makes me think maybe there's not a bird under my bed is the color of the feathers I know I took a photo of this where is it because the the feathers yeah the feathers aren't really like I can't think of a bird that has that color feathers so I'm thinking maybe maybe it just got into some of my crafting things no, 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 no. That's fine. I'm glad you're alive, but no one wants to listen to you. On... Shush. I'm now watching somebody else's stream while streaming, and I can't turn it off. Um, so, anyway. Uh, so, maybe, maybe, maybe you just got into my crafting stuff and, and murdered some of my crafting feathers, which would be fine because those were already dead. Um, but yeah, I, I, everyone's right, I should look under my bed tonight because if, if maggots and flies and things start happening, that's going to be, um, much worse. Yes. Speaking as someone who currently has freaking drain flies in my kitchen oh. that I can't get rid of, yeah. little bastards... I keep trying all the things they say on the internet, boiling water and salt and vinegar and baking soda and 
you know, horror and hatred and cursing, none of it works. Um, and we, we have ducks, pheasants, and peacocks all in America, but not generally running, uh, ducks running wild, peacocks and pheasants not so much. Also, like, my cat is this big, so if she's, she's only capable of murdering so much volume of bird. So, I mean, it's gotta be a, a it's gotta be a bird that's not bigger than this which those feathers seem a little disproportionate for. So, um, it, it, when, like I said, it's possible she just murdered some of my crafting stuff and not an actual creature. Okay, so back to speaking of crafting, I was doing a project um, before I got involved in all of this talking about murders. So, I, what I have here is I have a heme stat, and I have clipped together... rubber hands that do you have them do you mean ground for you well i don't know if we have any in the store uh, so okay i'm just gonna use this one uh so if you have a hemostat with the rubber tips it's actually gonna work better for this but i don't so i'm just gonna use this one so i'm gonna clip this closed so what i want to do is i want to go approximately that same a distance from this prong this is where that remember when I said like 40 minutes ago we're gonna have to fudge this a little bit because my actual distance my measured distance wasn't 0.5 it was 0.45 so I'm gonna go slightly less than half an inch here and I'm gonna start wrapping so I'm gonna take my half round wire and I'm gonna take my J I'm gonna hook it over my three square wires and I'm going to start wrapping it around. Okay, so I'm just going to start wrapping that around those wires to bind them together. And then when I get to a prong, I'm just going to move my hemostat down a bit. Okay, I really ideally want these prongs to be lined up though, so if I can, I'm just going to give that wire a scotch to line it up. And then when I get to my prong, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skip over it and then keep wrapping. And so anytime you're wrapping with half round wire, you want to make sure you're wrapping with the round side on the outside and the flat side on the inside. So I'm going to keep doing this until I've wrapped the entire length of my setting here. Let's see. And now I'm going to read what Good Vibes, Good Vibes' story, which is guaranteed to be interesting. Um, so let's see. Her cousin, who lives in England, has been on about rivers draining. And she lives around the backcountry area as the rivers are draining. Bodies have been found, yeah, uh, due to the mafia that was about eight. That was on about 1856, 1956 to 2000. And a body found in a barrel. <laughs> wow. So, um, interesting story. Uh, speaking of bodies being found. Um, this is something that that I read um, that was of interest in a sort of morbid way um, a, a couple of years ago was that more bodies are washing up on beaches now than used to and um, and and not necessarily because of foul play but um, you know just from boating accidents and whatnot but because tennis shoes now are made of more buoyant material than they used to be and so um so yeah so people who were wearing tennis shoes on boats and whatnot and fell off and drowned um are now you know there's more of them washing up than falling to the bottom of the ocean 
So we're on a great start for our Beating Dream stream tonight um, with all of the talk of dead bodies. I can't even, you know, I can't wait to see where the sale stream goes. Okay, so I'm continuing to wrap all three of mine together. I'm, every once in a while I'm just going to take this chain nose and I'm going to crimp. Because ideally what I want is I do want three wires stacked on top of each other. I don't want them to kind of turn into a bundle. And Corvus says she didn't know there was an English Mafia. That's totally fair. But I also feel like... Um, mafia type organizations <laughs> exist in all countries. Also, anytime you're in a boat, yes, wear shoes in case of murder. See? The Beating Dream stream is giving everyone really good survival advice. I mean, we can just talk about all of the, like, sneaky, nefarious stuff. Okay, Amy, I still can't get over the fact that there was a dead bot. There was a corpse in the foundation of your house. That's insane. Alright, so I want to um, replicate this distance here on this side. Like, that is literally not so. Alright, so once I've done that, I'm going to trim it. Yeah, I've been... So, so here's the thing, Good Vibes, is, is apparently fruit flies and drain flies, though they look the same to the human eye, are different. So yeah, fruit flies I definitely know how to trap with wine. Drain flies... Have you tried the um, apple cider vinegar in Dawn? Yes. <sighs> Drain flies... Bastards. They really are. Okay, so now I have my setting. I can salt my hand out. <laughs> Okay, got it. So now I'm going to take my setting that I've made and I'm going to form it around my actual stone. But yeah, drain flies, definitely bastards. Fruit flies, also bastards. Just, you know, I mean, all small flyy things in your kitchen that you don't want. Yeah, no fun. Um, that's fair, good vibes, though. I do feel like the prevalence of crime procedurals have made it easier to commit a good murder there that sorry I was halfway down that road when I realized it was it was going a bad place but like you know I've watched enough episodes of CSI that I feel like I at least have a concept of how to how to get away with murder were I feeling murdery okay so I'm gonna take this and and what I did is I just grabbed a ring mandrel to help myself um, form the bottom and I'm going to form this around my stone and what I want to do is I want to interlace these wires on the top so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, fan them out so and then I'm just going to go ahead and bring this together and I'm going to interlace so I'm going to do one in front, one behind, one in front, one behind, and one in front, one behind like so. <laughs> I 
<laughs> well, you know, Corvus, I only look innocent. Um, hey, good vibes. We like you, hi. Uh, never thought about that as a child. I thought about other weird things, though, as a child. Um, okay, so now we're going to take one of these wires and only one, and I'm just going to wrap it around to kind of anchor everything together. Now, you'll notice that this is definitely not the shape of my stone anymore, so that's why I'm going to once again grab my ring mandrel. Hi, Ace! Welcome to the talk of murdering things and people and Hi. crime procedurals and yeah, no, it, it was so, so the court, so, okay, so to be fair, so it was Amy's house, but they lived there 20 years. The corpse has been there for 40 years. Therefore, it's pretty obvious that Amy did not put the corpse there, but yes, it was there the entire time they lived there. That's, That's creepy. freaking yeah. nuts and creepy as hell. Okay, so now what we're going to do, now that I've got all of this together, I'm going to make sure my stone fits in it, which it does, which is awesome. Oh, that's an interesting question. Can you sue the former owners for non-disclosure of the corpse? Yeah, I guess if they knew it, if was, they there. Knew it was there, but... Amy says all of her exes are accounted for, she swears. Um, okay, so now I'm going to bring the rest of these up and use them to make a bale. So at this point, you can you can make a bale of however many of these or few of these you want. So um, we used one to anchor. We're going to use that one to actually anchor again. Um... <laughs> Oh my gosh, good vibes. I swear, so my mother is like obsessed with British and um, any anything from the UK crime procedurals. I'm going to see you on one of those procedurals one day, I swear. Um, but yeah, I mean, how do, I mean, let's just go back to how does the corpse get in the foundation of the house to begin with? I, I feel like... It probably wasn't the home buyers that put the corpse there. It so was the well, well, right, or somebody chunked the corpse in there, and then they poured the foundation on top of it unknowingly. That's true. I mean. I, uh, uh. Okay, I'm going to finish this project because, like, literally this is breaking my brain. Um, but, yeah, I do I do feel like you, you could only sue the former owners uh, for non-disclosure of the corpse if they had knowledge of the corpse's existence. Wow. Interesting. Huh. Y'all are funny. Okay, so I've got five wires here, and I'm going to go ahead and use these to make a bale. Now, when you're making a bale, you need a cylinder, not a cone, which means that you don't need a round nose pliers. You need a bale making pliers, or you just need um, something that is cylindrical, and you're going to bend your wires all over that to make your bale because you want them all to have the same curvature and then you're going to bring them all in together and and not leave myself enough wire on that so it is the shape of a pineapple it's true so had I left myself enough wire here I would use this wire to anchor them down, and I'm going to start with that wire. I'm just going to grab it 
and bring it round. And so your, your idea here is you want to pull everything in as close and tight as possible. Since I don't have enough on that original anchoring wire, I'm going to go ahead and just um, use another one of the wires to do the same thing. So we're just going to make sure everything stays round and we're going to bring that around and anchor. Like so. Tuck everything in and then these remaining wires from the bale that are on the back, you can go ahead and um, take those and you just want to bend them up and trim them off to anchor them or you can continue to bring them around. Okay, but how how do you how do you check the foundations of your new house for corpses, Diane? Um, insurance adjuster, do you want to weigh in on this? Uh, the only way you could do it was is probably ground penetrating radar or actually going into the foundations. I don't know. There's a way to know until you dig into it. So is this a potential new industry? <laughs> that we could tap into of like the service of checking does your home have any corpses in the foundation <laughs> i mean i, I yeah and and not something i would have ever thought of until now but apparently it happens so it was in the slab amy that means they had to put the body in and then pour the slab in order for that to work. Because she said it was in the foundation. I'm I'm assuming it was a slab and not pier and beam. Yes? I assume. So, so the, the corpse was in the slab under Laith's room? Wow. Okay, so then now I have another question, which is, how did you find out about this? Since well, if they had a plumbing leak, they probably needed to dig into the foundation. There's probably a slab leak. Well, I know, but Amy sold the house. Oh, yeah, that's true. Maybe they called her and asked her if she knew about it. Ah! Or maybe they had to take a state. The police had to take her statement. Oh my gosh. Her neighbor. Got it. Good old neighborhood gossip. We love no uh, it'll, it'll neighborhood. It'll tell you all about the corpses in your foundation. <laughs> ah! How, good vibes, like how, how, how does one get harassed by a cactus? I mean, I've got a, I have gotten attacked by cacti before, usually when I was transplanting them without gloves, but, um, I would, I, I'm interested to know how one, um, how one gets harassed by a cactus. Okay, so I've got two more wires here, I'm just gonna, um, tuck those up and trim them off because it is getting very late and I have a whole bunch of stuff I have to do before I start the sales stream. So, we're gonna finish this project now. Um, so we're gonna just bring those up, tuck them in. So your main concerns as far as this goes is that you don't want anything that's gonna be stabby and you don't want anything that's gonna come undone. So now, last thing to do of course is gonna be to set your stone, so we're going to put that in there. Uh, okay, well that, that's fair. Alright, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our chain nose pliers and we're going to bend each prong in. So the top one in, the bottom one in, and then we're going to grab both of them with our pliers like so and we're going to press them down. As with anything that we're setting, we're going to go in opposition, which means from this one we're going to go down here. Um, yes, Lori, Lori has a question that does not involve talking about corpses, which is if you have a thicker stone or a deeper stone, do you make the prongs longer? And the answer to that is yes, you do. So these were about an eighth of an inch. Oh dear, and the backyard has a pool that was filled in. But a Amy, did did you purchase your house from a crime boss? I'm just curious now. Um, cause, yeah. Uh, so anyway, yes. So if you have a stone that is deeper, yes, 
you would make longer prongs. Yes, that would mean you would also probably need to start with a longer piece of wire. Second question was, can you use a flat-backed cabochon for this? The answer to that is yes, you can. If you're using a flat-backed cabochon, um, depending on the height of your cabochon, sometimes, uh, sometimes what you need to do is actually make the one side of the prongs uh, taller than the other. So if you're using a flat back stone instead of a pavilion cut stone or um, I have kind of a rose cut stone here, but if you're using a flat back cabochon that's really tall on the front, sometimes um, in that case you would make this set of prongs on the front actually longer, longer than the ones that are on the back that are holding the flat back of the cabochon. Um, this is not a flat back cabochon, this is this is kind of a rose cut, like I said. Symmetrical stone. So that, people, <laughs> um, I mean, retired from what, Amy? Like, what, what, from what industry, were they, were they in the meat packing industry? Just, just wondering. Ouch. Smack my knee. All right, so that's it. That was our, um, ah, that was our murder stream, also known as Put on the Grandpa. <laughs> Y'all are killing me. Um, no, but that was that was our tutorial stream. Um, so wire wrapped, faceted gemstone pendant. So, um, hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully, among all of everything, y'all learned something about how to how to wire wrap a faceted gemstone. Thank you, Lori. Um, I will go ahead, Lori, and I will um, send you the whole PDF of the handout um, tonight because it's on my laptop, which is not here. It's at home. So tonight or tomorrow. Uh, so thanks to y'all so much for hanging out with us on the tutorial stream for this pendant. Now. It is 7.30. Uh, that means that I'm supposed to be starting the sale in three minutes. That's not going to happen. So in 30 minutes, we will be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash feeding dream, with our live merchandise sale featuring all the stuff that I said I was going to get to on Wednesday and didn't. That includes amber colored glass beads, um, crystals, and then uh, silver and gold toned metal beads. So everybody... If you're going to be here for the sale, thank you so much. We'll appreciate it. Don't forget to get comfy, get cozy, get a drink. And possibly a snack. Hydration is never a bad thing. And we'll see you in 30 minutes. If we're not going to see you for the sale, thanks so much for hanging out for the tutorial. And don't forget, we'll be back on this channel. I don't, if there are corpses under beating dreams, I don't want to know. Um, we'll be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream in 30 minutes. That's going to be 8 p.m. Central Time, y'all, with a live merchandise sale. So everyone, take a quick break, and we will see you soon.